Do you have a cool project you're working on that you want everyone to know about? Maybe a sweet music project or some Harlequin fan fiction? Maybe you want to just send your GM a birthday message. Head on over to complexaction.net slash support and sponsor an episode of The Actual Play. Don't have anything you want us to read out before the show? No problem. We take simple sponsor donations as well. We'll read your name off before the episode starts and all your friends can be jealous. Uh, that's complexaction.net slash support, or just click on the support us link at the top of the website. You're listening to the Complex Action Actual Play Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Daniel Oglesby. Thanks for your support. The team realizes that Haley has been missing for a couple of days. Perfect timing, too, as she's pretty much a critical part of carrying out the current run that they're planning. Well, maybe Rudolph has some answers. They should probably go ask. Now, please enjoy episode 16, Throwback. Okay. It is... Friday, September, what did I just tell you? 16th. Friday, September 16th. You guys have just in the evening or, or that late night, your team just got done uh, tracking down the uh, cleaning person of uh, just one of the people who works for the cleaning company that cleans the uh, one of the main office buildings for Blue Data. You tracked that person down because you wanted to get a copy of their uh, pass key that they had, and you had pretty simple time getting in there, getting it, and making a good copy of it. Um, yeah, Leroy is awesome. That's right. Leroy stealthed in like a stealthy guy. I mean, when the guy is asleep, it's not that hard. It's kind of like the reverse coyote at least too. So you guys, as part of your plan, did that. Um, also, um, I believe... Um, you've done lots of legwork. You've done lots of staking this place out. It's got, uh, from what you've seen, some magical, at least evidence of some magical security um, to remind you what you've got to do is you're supposed to go in there, get onto the secure uh, R&D server inside this building, which is presumably blocked from the outside. So you have to get on site, get in there, get on the server and collect some data uh, blueprints or schematics of some sort outlining a new potential prototype for a comlink dongle that allows the uh, user of the comlink to employ um, ice-like defenses on their device. So an interesting piece of technology that they are working on. And your, uh, your Johnson, Z-Trip, has asked you to go find that. Now you guys will notice you were going to do that that evening, um, at least that's what you had talked about, but um, it, it hits you suddenly that um, in, your, in your planning lately, um, you haven't heard from Haley in a while. Yeah, how about that? We haven't heard from Haley in a while. I guess I'll give her a call. Well, when you call her uh, Comlink or, or whatever it is that you use to, to call her, she doesn't answer. You, you don't get any kind of response. What time is this? Right now it's pretty late after your uh, after your break-in of that employee. So it's probably about 10.30 or 11. Hmm. Uh, you know, maybe we should just ask around at the uh, horseshoe. Yeah. Does anybody might... know what she was last doing? Sorry, what's anybody know what she was last doing? I mean, I don't think we were being hunted by anybody. I called z Or Rudolph? Yeah, it's kind of late to bug Rudolph. I'm, I don't want to inconvenience him unless, it's, uh, unless we ruled out some other options. Do you know where she lives? Do I know where she lives? Yeah, you guys know where she lives. She lives in um, in the area, the university area around the Horseshoe, and you would know where she specifically lives. Uh, yeah, I know where her place is. We can check there first. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So yeah, we'll uh, load up in the Coco taxi and drive over there. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm just picturing Leroy in the Coco taxi, looking not at all pleased to be in a Coco taxi. He he no one sees him. Week. Thank you. Very oh, okay. Much. Okay, I should We're really get my own. Dead in that thing. You know, it was like, this thing's awesome. I should really get my own vehicle too. Though. We gotta pull off some bigger jobs for that, though, right? No, we'll get you paid. Don't worry. 
actually, since I've been thinking, as uh, Shadowrunners, right, we're, we're paid to do these jobs where we go into places and take things from them, like, like this place, right? Yeah. Who's to say that at the same time, we can't add maybe a secondary or tertiary objective and find out something else of value there? And that Miss Macy Thieves, man, that's way different. No, it's not. It's yes, the same it's thing. Way different. Wait, no, you only get you only steal if you're being paid to steal. You don't steal because you need it. That makes that, you a thief. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. I mean, yes, yes, that makes us a thief, but we're already thieves. Whoa, I'm not a thief. I'm not a thief, unless I'm paid to be one. I'm a professional. In which case, you're way a thief. Different. A thief. Way different, man. We are thieves. No, no, no. Thieves no. and yeah, never mind. I, I, I know uh, you're new at this. You just don't get it yet. Well, I'll, I'll try to figure out a better way to explain it. I don't know. I'm gonna run it past Leroy. See what he says. You do that. Do you want us to go steal you a car? Like that? What's it about? This one, uh, get up for vehicles deck. No, no. It's about maximizing our profits. We're gonna so go into to, a place that's you already want to go to steal a car. No, not not steal a car. I'm talking about when we do the run on this place. We're already what? breaking past their security, right? We're bound to have other stuff or things of value that we can pick up along the way. Yeah. Maybe we can do a little bit of research and find out. I mean, I don't know if my sister's going to mention anything she might have spotted that might be worth stealing now that I'm talking about stealing. And so you're somehow against stealing when we're not getting paid to steal, like as if that makes some sort of weird difference. I mean, yeah. does that make a difference to you? I mean, we're we're thieves, you, right? Because if you want a car, we can just go get a car. I don't have to worry about some corpse that fragger shooting me about a car this is about you just said you wanted the money to buy a car it's just yeah, and, a car i don't know that seems wrong for some reason i mean that's like some person's car we're not like taking a notch out of a corporation what if what if we stole the car from somebody who worked for a corp would that make you feel better but so you're against grabbing more stuff from the building probably because those guys will shoot me i don't like being shot they're gonna try to shoot you anyway if we bump into one I try to limit how many times I get shot in a night, though. All right, all right. But just think about it and keep your eyes open for opportunities. Have you ever be been this... shot? What? Have you ever been shot? No, and I aim to keep that. Uh... All right, we'll we'll go out one night, and you can see why it sucks. I'm not sure I like that idea so much. If just... I'm going to get shot, it's uh, not going to be something on my to-do list. Go steal a car afterwards. All right, so you guys head back to Haley's. When you guys go into the horseshoe, you go to Haley's room, where it is that you know that she lives. Um, the door is... The, you go and try the door and knock and everything, and it's unlocked. And you go in, and there's just nothing there. Like, it doesn't look like anybody lives there. Um, she didn't have a lot of stuff to begin with, so it's it's not like a stark contrast to what you guys have seen there before. Um, she she lived very minimally, but but there's nothing there. None of her stuff is there. Huh, maybe she uh, upgraded her uh, lodgings like I recently did. Did she say anything to anybody about uh, moving into, into a new place? Not to me. I don't know, man. What time is it? Uh, by the time you get there, it's it's near. It's it's close to midnight. It's after eleven. Is anybody still up? Okay, just walking around the halls or anything. Um. There's there's somebody walking down the hall, uh, coming back inside from from um, out in the horseshoe. They're smoking a cigarette. When you guys you passed by them when they came in, and they're walking past you now. I'm gonna tap him on the shoulder. Like, hey, hey, you know this girl? Uh, um, yeah, that uh, that that young, yeah, I know her, the one with the blue hair. Yeah, have you seen her lately? Um, I saw her just a couple of days ago, but, um, just saw her the other day. She was with somebody and they were walking out and it looked like they were heading out vacation or something, bags and stuff. Maybe well, she was moving like. out or something. I don't know. Uh, thanks, ma'am. Yeah, no problem. Maybe we do need to check in with Rudolph. We can probably wait till morning, though. Yeah, say we wait and talk to Rudolph tomorrow. I'm gonna... Four hits on both kind of just looking the place over for clues and then four hits for any kind of strange sense, like gunfire. I'm also going to sense the area. Okay. Uh, while you're assessing the area, Leroy, you're looking around and it's not like... So So you don't smell anything strange. Um, what stands out to you, depending on how, you know, what what direction Leroy's brain is going in. There's no, like, cleaners. In fact, it wasn't... Um, It doesn't look like it was, like thoroughly cleaned or anything there's a little bit of trash here and there it doesn't look like doesn't look like anybody was hiding anything or anything like that 
Um, but everything's gone and it doesn't really look like there was a struggle or, you know, anything like that. Um, but, um, so, so unless you're looking for something in particular, um, I'll just generally say it doesn't look strange in there. Nothing stands out to Leroy. All right. Yeah, no, he's, uh, satisfied with this situation for a moment. I got three hits on a sensing. Well, you can tell that, uh. It wasn't long ago. Um, it's fading quickly, but there's this sense of some um, s- some negative emotions that sudden negative emotions like like uh, anger and maybe a little bit of anguish. Um, you know, like 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 the kinds of emotions you would detect maybe in an argument. All right, I'm gonna summon a four six spirit of fire. I got five hits. All right. Let's see. You got two net hits, and uh, you'll so you'll be rolling uh, six drain. Okay, I stagger a bit as I take three drain, uh, but I pick the optional powers of guard and search, and I'm going to send it. Uh, tell it to use a search power uh, starting from this point to find Haley, and I have a good impression of Haley to be given. All right. Uh, that can take a while. Yep. Basically has 12 for any dice pools in there. I don't know if you want to roll it or you want me to roll it. And the difficulty or the threshold needed for, to, to finish off the test is, uh, I think, based on how far away she is and whether or not she's behind any mana barriers and some stuff like that. Yeah, I have to look up where those uh, thresholds and whatnot would be. If you have a page number off the top of your head while I pull up the book, it would help. I'm sorry, the page for what? I'm still looking it up. Just the search power. Uh, it's intervals of 10 minutes. I know that off the top of my head. Yeah, it's not in the spirit section. It's the critter section. I got 400. the power section. Three, nine, oh, 400 for the search power in particular. Yep. Okay, thanks. Just found it. Yeah, it's a threshold of 5, 10 minutes per test, but uh, plenty of stuff can affect it. So if she's hidden by concealment power or behind a mana barrier, that actually takes away from the dice pool. Everything else just adds to the threshold. It starts with 12 dice and goes until it either finds her or runs out. All right, let me, I'll roll that real quick. All right, so what happens when it does run out? If it hasn't gotten enough hits, it, it doesn't find her. But does it, will it come back and tell you, I guess? Yeah. All right, so that's what'll happen. It comes back and it says that it, um, and it's going to take, I mean, it'll be gone for the, the whole time. And it, um, so I guess two hours later, it would return and tell you that it wasn't able to find the person you wanted it to find. All right, I'm going to catch some Z's in the meantime. All right, so are you guys going to, early in the first thing in the morning, going to go talk to Leroy? I hope not. I sleep in late. To, to who? You mean Rudolph? I, don't, <laughs> I meant Rudolph. But I don't, I don't know, know why I that. equated Leroy with Rudolph. but Rudolph, I'm willing to go talk to you first thing in the morning. I'm not waking that guy up. <laughs> All right, I only ask because we can fast forward to that if you'd like. Yep, I'm going to get a good night's sleep and uh, bug Rudolph in the morning. Okay. Um, well, are you trying to... Um, We'll just say, unless you wanted to catch him on the way to... Where, where do you want to catch him? On the way to work? on In his office? At his home? Yeah, on the way to work would be best. All right. I'm going to well, get Pillar involved, so maybe she can read him. I'll pick to get up. Well, I can walk to his place. All right. I'll meet you at your house and walk there with you. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, when you guys find uh, Rudolph on the way to work, you know, you, you had to kind of wait out a little bit because it's not exactly a, a long walk between where he lives on the horseshoe to where his office, but you catch him, you know, on the way he's waving to people and saying hi, just like he does. But, um, he stuff, he says, Hey, uh, um, Elric pillar. Hi Rudolph. Well, how can I help you? Uh, we were kind of hoping you might know something about, uh, Haley's whereabouts. He uh, he kind of closes his eyes a little bit as he nods, and he says, yes, yes, I, f- I figured you guys would come and talk to me about this. Um, Haley has decided that uh, that it would be best for everyone if she, if she had a change in location, change in employment. She, um, she, she needed me to help her out with a thing or two, and, and uh, I decided to, to help her out, offer some services of mine, and, and get her. She's, she's okay. She's... She's just not here anymore. All right. I kind of eye him dubiously. Would you like to judge his intentions? <laughs> uh, yes, I would. That just sounds fishy. Uh, that's four hits. You can tell, you can't tell uh, the nature of what it is or the reason behind why it is, but you can tell he's not giving you the full story 
that's that's it. There's something about what he's saying. All right, I guess I'll kind of nod and huh, she could have left behind a message or something. He says, "Well, she um she asked us to to get her stuff and to help her out and I'm sorry. I guess I I guess I would have thought she would have gotten in touch with you guys too. Did you try calling her? Yeah, not a note or anything. Well, that is strange. I I don't know what to say. Something in particular spook her? Say that again. Did something in particular spook her? Um, well, you know, she, uh, she didn't say a lot, and she, um, she seemed kind of, you know, like she wanted to keep it quiet a little bit, and, 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 uh, and I don't know, she's got a lot that she's dealing with, as I, as, as you may know. You guys were, hmm. you guys were on a, uh, a, a little bit of an errand, weren't you? Yeah, and she's kind of, a. Uh... Well, she's probably the most important puzzle piece to us pulling it off. <laughs> he chuckles a little bit. He said, she did tell me a little bit of something like that, and I had a feeling, that's why I had a feeling you'd come and talk to me. Um, so I did uh, take the liberty of uh, calling somebody up and um, who might be, why don't you guys come with me to my office? Um, I'll make another phone call, and I might be able to, to help you out with this a little bit. All right, now I'm going to call Leroy. What time of the Le morning is this? It's uh, just before eight. Oh man, he will uh, he will answer the phone very groggily. Hey, uh, Leroy, it's Elric. Uh, sorry to call you so early, but I think you better get down here. Is he cutting in and out for anybody else? C Cliff is getting quiet and loud up and down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's just where the mic was positioned. How's this? It's a little moment. bit better. Just then. And Elric says, uh, uh, "Sorry to bug you so early, uh, uh, but I think you better get down here." It'll be that that moment of. Uh, <sighs> is it important? Yeah, it's about Haley. I guess she uh, took off, but uh, Rudolph's got some info for us, or I don't know, he's made some preparations. I think you're going to want to be here for this. All right. And he'll uh, roll over and get out of bed and hang up on the phone and be there in however long that takes. All right. It doesn't take long. So you get there, and and um, he he makes a call, and he asks you guys to wait. And um, throwback, you get a phone call from... from uh, from Rudolph. All right. He says, uh, "Throwback. Um, hey, I I know you're not normally supposed to be coming in and and helping me out. Um, but I got a little bit of something that might r might be right up your alley that you can help me with, and 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 some friends of mine. Do you think you mind coming down uh, to my office? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. When? Uh, right now would be perfect." I'm on my way. Thank you very much. He hangs up. Yeah, gather, uh, gather up my belongings and uh, roll on down. All right. Now, does does Throwback live out in the area where? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to spill the beans so. too much. Okay. All right. So it's going to take um, maybe like twenty or twenty or so minutes, but but uh, he eventually gets there and 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 eventually. Um, comes on in. You guys just going to be sitting there waiting? Yeah, I think well, so. After Rudolph makes the call, I'll kind of be expecting to say something more. <laughs> well, he, I mean, he hangs up and he says, I've, "Like I said, I've got somebody coming in who I think will be good to who will be able to help you guys out. He's he's great. He's done some work for me before, and um, and uh, just sit tight. All right, well, hang on. I stop somewhere and get breakfast. Sure. So after that amount of time, um, uh, Throwback arrives, and why don't you why don't you give a, a description of Throwback and 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 how he arrives, <laughs> so to speak. All right, Throwback, uh, as you first see him, is a, a human male, uh, Caucasian. He's got a shaved head, but it's a little bit of a, a black stubble. Uh, a full black beard. Um, when you first see him, uh, the first thing that'll catch your attention is he is in a wheelchair, uh, wearing sort of baggier clothes, probably probably a little overdressed for the heat. Uh, big uh, big toothy grin and a smile on his face. Probably looks to be in his maybe his late twenties, early thirties. And Rudolph will say, "Yes, yes. Here's a here he is. Throwback, as he likes to be called. Um, he is a Decker. I mean, I dabble, uh, but, but yeah, thanks. Well, um, these people here, I'd like to introduce you to um, Throwback. This is 
uh, Pillar. Hey, what's up, guys? Good to meet you. Um, here we have uh, Elric and Leroy. We'll go to shake your hand, giving you a the stink eye the whole time a little bit. What's up yeah, with the wheelchair? Uh, uh, Leroy will get a, a handshake in return. Uh, you'll you'll notice it's it's a bit on the weaker side, and uh, he'll smile at um, Elric. Say, that's how we get around. Elric's not gonna be a staring at him. Yeah, it's a pretty big problem. I mean, I don't have anything against you know people with difficulties of that sort by any means, and it's it's horrible. I'm sorry for your. Loss of function, but we go into some pretty dangerous arm, places. Put an arm on Elric's shoulder to try to get him to stop. <laughs> I mean, it's just not... We're going to be going into buildings and getting shot at and chased around by people. I don't think you're going to work out. You're just going to die. He's not that big, man. I can carry him around when you do. We'll be fine. No, while you're carrying him around, you're not going to be able to take care of yourself, and you're going to get yourself geeked, too. Rudolph. Uh, this guy's, I mean, if we were doing remote ops, sure, I, I'm, I'm sure he's an amazing decker, but for the direct we've got to do? Hey, kid. We can talk about this later if you want to talk about it. Don't do this here. That's rude. And she'll uh, walk over and slap her back on the back. <laughs> You'll be fine, man. Yeah, well, I'm sorry if it's rude, but I'm thinking about pe people not getting geeked, including him and us. What kind of work is this, Rudolph? And now, now, is, now is the pertinent time. I mean, how are you going to handle yourself in a firefight if you can't move very well? Rudolph stands up and he, he kind of puts his hands out and he says, Listen, listen, um, this is not the time or this is not the place to uh, continue to have this type of detailed discussion. If you guys would like to continue to talk, you can uh, take it elsewhere. I've got a room that you can talk in or something like that. But um, I have some things to do. Listen, Elric, um, I understand the concerns that you have. And uh, whether they're valid or not is is not as important as the fact that this is who I have to help you. And he's he he has a more stern look on his face than he than he typically ever uses. It works sort of like lets out a deep sigh, sort of blowing up at a part of his hair that's hanging down on his face, and kind of slumps his shoulders a bit. Last all right, I'll try to be more open-minded about it. But all right, I know you're. Thanks for trying to help. He nods and turns back to throwback and says, you know, you asked about the type of work. I'm sure that uh, these fine people will be able to explain that to you in greater detail than I can. I'm not the one who is employing them in anything. I'm just trying to extend them a helping hand. So um, if you guys will uh, please kind of leave me to my work and um, uh, thank you. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. Won't let you down. And uh, Rudolph's assistant opens the door and, you know, sees you guys out. Uh, All right, man, I say as we're walking out. Sorry. I would say Pills would try to make a small chit chat with a new guy. Anything in particular? No, no, no. How you doing? Come on. Don't listen to them. Then They'll get over it. I've had people doubt me for years. It ain't nothing new. I know how to carry my own. I know the feeling. It should give me a fist bump. Yeah, you'll, you'll get a hesitation, but, but you'll get one in return. Yeah, it overcomes walking up. Hey, man, I'm sorry about being so blunt back there. It's just... I don't mean to be rude. I'm, I'm sure you're an awesome decker, and I don't I doubt your abilities there. I just don't think you know what Rudolph's getting you into. Rudolph's done me a lot of favors. I owe him one. He asked me to help you guys out. That's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, well, uh, let's talk. I'm, I'm open to suggestions on uh, how you think we can pull this off. Pull what off? We'll fill you in when we have a safe place to talk about it. Need to take my car? You have a car? Yeah, a little something. What kind? It's not a cocoa taxi. No, no, nothing like that. Uh, here, it's just around the corner. I'd like to pretend that that was uh, something Payday said. <laughs> and uh, Throwback will lead you guys outside and to a um, waiting GMC Sidewinder, which is a large SUV. Nice! Um, I believe... I forgot to write down the colors. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, a, a bright purple. Uh, it's got chrome, you know, very shiny rims. Uh, looks looks pretty fancy uh, for, you know, being a streetcar, riding a little bit lower to the ground than, than normal. Um, mm, never mind. <laughs> oh, Derek, let's go get some breakfast, huh? Everybody can give me an give me an intuition minus one, except for throwback. It's three hits. One hit. <laughs> wow apparently that coffee i had has kept me awake and alert um pillar doesn't really notice but elric and leroy 
you both uh you both happen to notice when when he's showing you the the his car um it's decked out and the paint job is very reminiscent of the dragons gang wait a minute what's wrong thought you wanted to get breakfast i know a place not too far from here sure you want to sit down at the same table as an orc kind of cock my head to the side yeah i think so you don't like the crippled or races what no i never said anything like that i've got nothing against people who are you keep bringing it up i suppose you're allowed to say that word no, i mean your paint job you're affiliated with the you're affiliated with the dragons last i checked they're pretty uh anti-metahuman they're back just shrugs we got a job to do don't we i'm here to help rudolph and i don't have any problem with anybody and i'll kind of nod towards uh pillar worst coming the worst we found you a car Gets on his bike and drives off. That was actually a good one. All right, so you guys just headed somewhere to to discuss, I'm guessing, right? The location isn't as important as the discussion? Yeah. Okay, it won't so. be hard. We we won't agonize over that. It won't be hard for you to guys find somewhere, you know, that uh, that you can talk. I don't think there's anything we're not going to tell? Question mark? Yeah, Elric seems to be uh, the most, or the least forthcoming with details and information. I have to ask him directly to speak up and <laughs> kind of a, a few times looks appalled at his, his, his sister for a couple moments of the stuff that she's saying, but uh, doesn't see, can't, can't seem to think of a good way to, to say, should we be saying all this in front of him without being too obvious about it? So, all right. So it's mostly quiet and uh, glares at uh, throwback mostly. I do have a small change I wish to, uh, I wish to make. Um, to the to the plan or to the details? Yes, we're uh, sitting down somewhere having waffles. Yeah, since we got kicked out of the barbecue place, this bullshit. Uh, I want to go to a hardware store and get a battery operated drill that could drill through a wall. Sure. Um, uh, drill through a wall. What kind of wall? So my thought process is, at least in the, the simple terms that Leroy would understand it, is all right. This has got to have a cage and. If we can drill through the wall, we could maybe get enough of a wireless signal that we don't have to worry about a wheelchair, you know, something to uh, to break that contained aspect of the, the internet. Doesn't doesn't that take a lot of time and make a lot of noise? Mm, never driven through a, drilled through a wall before. Your experience drilling through other things tells you that probably it would make some noise. <laughs> I mean, I got a mini wall. That's pretty good at cutting holes and things. I mean, it's definitely not a thermal drill that you'll have to restart every couple of seconds. <laughs> Haiti reference. Yeah. I was worried it fell a little flat. Literally just yeah, those down. things suck. Um, at worst, we could use it to drill physically through a lock. Sure, you can get one. Um, it'll cost you, let's say uh, it was on sale. You could get it for 50 new yen. A deal at twice the price. All right, so are we going to do this tonight? Do we even have a plan? Sounds like we do now. We're going to go to the place. Uh, sneak up, use the key card to get in. Uh, and then what? All the while, uh, moving on through, um, you know, I, I guess your part, I gesture towards a uh, throwback, is to make sure that we don't get picked up by alarms or cameras in direct. Maybe you can do something about the drones without uh, them knowing you're doing it. I mean, can you do stuff like that? Yeah, it can be pretty sneaky. Nice. Um, can you get us a floor plan so we have some idea where we're going before we get in there? And we need to find wherever their secured host is. It should be a fairly significant building and i think uh i think our plan was once we got Haley in the building she'd be able to um access things more easily and uh, maybe then we could hone in on where our objective was i could probably get a floor plan but if this is some sort of secret room there's a good chance it won't be marked you guys not know where it is already we haven't figured out a way to find that out other than go looking around the building and that's kind of uh something we really only mean to do once i can certainly try and if you can do anything that uh, hacking stuff to their system to find out where this place most likely is, if we know what part of the building we're going to, that will dramatically improve our chance of success. I got a hunch it'll be the part of the building that doesn't have any wireless signals coming from it. All right, but I still want to deal with the big question of what happens when we're moving around with you and guards show up and we're in a firefight. I shoot back. How do you just not die because you're in a wheelchair like a sitting duck? The same way you don't die when you knock yourself out and I'm stuck dragging your carcass out of there. That's never happened before. I've been in plenty of fights, before and after. 
I seem to recall somebody vomiting on some stairs. Oh, that was can... after the fight. You'd have vomited too if you'd have done that to somebody. Well, maybe you would have. You'd probably done a lot worse, huh? <laughs> There's just a serious look and then a small smirk of like, oh, this kid. Right, well, well that, that was the first time I've ever actually killed a person before in person directly. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Trying to eat here. All right. Um, are you going to, is, is throwback going to try to do some, uh, matrix legwork and hacking and, and get some info? Yeah, it sounds like I should take a look, see if this place actually has a, a host connected to the grid. It does. And in the interest of saving time, because, um, a lot of time has already been spent on legwork and everything. I don't want to like hamstring or take the focus away from you or anything that's not my intention here but i was going to um uh just say that uh that you would probably ultimately be able to get this kind of stuff is are we okay with hand waving it i'm more than happy to hand wave it all right so through some matrix shenanigans you were able to get into the host and you're not doing anything too terribly heavy you know you're looking around poking some heads and in, eyes into some cameras getting on the host checking things out being careful um, looking for uh, blueprints maps everything that the that a good decker does in the legwork portion and you were able to um, narrow down the room that this is located in it's going to be on the bottom floor there are three floors above ground and there's actually a fourth floor um below semi below ground it's kind of like um the building sits on a little bit of a hill so it's so you can't see the fourth floor underground from the front but from the back you can um and the main entrance to that you can go through the front door um and take an elevator or stairs down of course but uh, there's also, a, in the back, there's an entrance that leads into a cafeteria, which is on that bottom floor. And it's, it's, um, it's in a hallway off of the cafeteria. There's a room which is basically, you know, sort of higher access. Like, you've been able to, you were able to notice that people have to go through a little bit more security to get in there. It's um, not really marked on any of the blueprints. And the wireless is kind of cold there. So your best bet is that this is the room you're looking for. All right, that was down on the the sub basement. The yeah, bottom okay. floor, sub floor one, so to speak. That sounds good. Uh, Throwback would definitely share all of that to the team with the other uh, blueprints he found, so they could find a way in. Nice work. Uh, Elric's gonna go to work in his house, uh, cooking up a bunch of alchemical creations. So I'll be busy for a few minutes rolling those up. You're not doing it in the back of a bus, so. Uh... Don't expect these ones to go so well. <laughs> oh no, I'm doing it within my magical lodge, so. <laughs> I'm in my specially prepared space, which lets me do some extra cool stuff, as uh, uh, Nikoya pointed out to me a while ago. Yeah. She told you it added to the limit. Uh huh. Of course, that means I risk physical drain as well, but. As soon as we figured out that rule, I ran over and told us all excited. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff just wrote a GM screen episode for me on reagents, and he taught me all sorts of really cool tricks that you can do with reagents. That's awesome. I really need that one, because I often forget all the cool stuff I can do with reagents, or even the normal stuff I can do with them. Like, like I never considered this neat little hack where you can use reagents to set the limit lower than the force that you're casting, so as to avoid um, overcasting like getting Probably too many hits. Your head up. Yeah, I never thought about that. Cast a really high force spell, but set the limit at like your magic rating so that you can't get, so you can't go over. So I thought yeah, that was it really cool. Gives you complete control over your spell casting. It's a pretty good one for uh, combat spells, especially. Do that. Yeah, they are magicians' bullets. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to put them. I I love as a GM getting my players to set up temporary lodges and stuff so that they're not hunted. <laughs> Problem with temporary lodges doesn't it take like forever to set them up? It takes up hours. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a forethought thing. It's not something yeah. you can do after yeah, you have like, somebody chasing you. Yeah, it's what you do when you've already got the bolt hole ready and you then you're running there after you're done. <laughs> so, uh, having collected all the information, are you guys comfortable with a plan? Are you going in, or do you are are we uh, are you guys finish putting the finishing touches on that? 
so we've uh, fast tracked finding the blueprints to the place. Does that include where on the blueprints we assume that uh, our target is? Sub basement. Yes, you have found the location of the uh, of the of the room that the data should be in. It's not a very big room, um, but it's there. Any other ways down to this uh, thing rather than just kind of walking in the front door and going downstairs? There are uh, there are three entrances on the main floor to the building, and uh, two of them are so so the room you guys are looking for on the the basement floor is um, is on sort of like the east side of the building. And so there would be two entrances on first floor that could get you on that side of the building, the main entrance and then a side entrance. Those will still, you know, you'll have to either take an elevator or stairs down. Um, there are a couple of stairwells in there that you could take. Um, there is the back door, uh, which is like a cafeteria room door um, that and and then another door. You know, there, there are a couple of doors on the back, too. Let me say they're near each other. And that would take you in back there. That would avoid you having to, inside the building, take an elevator or stairs. Uh, but the, the only door that you, by observation, are 100% sure that your key card works for is the front door. So um, you'd have to speculate on whether or not it works on any other entrance. Anybody got common sense? Or uh, some kind of heating and air. Uh, I've got something actually. Uh, two hits on security procedures. What are the chances that this works on other doors? Um, given that this is so, so it could go either way. Let me put it that way. That might be an unsatisfying answer, but take it for what it is. With two hits, you, you it could go either way. The the um, but the chances are with the type of entrances that these entrances are. Um, they just enter into like hallways and stuff like that. They're not they're not entrances into into what look like highly secure areas. Chances are you're going to be able to get in on any of the four main entrances. Um, like I said, when I say main entrances, I mean those traveled by employees. The front door to the building is the only quote unquote main entrance that anyone can get through during the day. Um, every other door is an employee-only door that requires a pass key at all times of day. But long story short, to answer your question, pr there's a there's a good chance that it works on all the all those doors. Do we know about what time we're going to go in? Those people we have to deal with in this group, and I think the better. So do it at right. That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, maybe a couple of hours after dark, or maybe even later. Maybe we can stake out the place and observe uh, for a little while uh, at night just to get a feel for the place again right before we go in. I think we're good on that. I'm sure Payday can provide us a little info there. We've staked it out a few days beforehand. But yeah, I would say we just go at night and uh, move quick, right? Were we able to get uh, like jumpsuits or whatever that make us look like the maintenance guy since we have a maintenance guy uh, outfit? I believe Pillar was able to get some, some uh, uniforms. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's a start. Is that the uh, is that the plan we're going with? Just kind of sneak in and sneak down there and cross our fingers. Uh, we know where to go in the building. Or at least uh, we have a as good a shot as we're likely to get. So we're gonna make our way there. Um, I'm gonna conjure a different kind of spirit than I normally go with, uh, as someone who can help us be more concealed. Theoretically, it should work effectively against the uh, spirits patrolling the astral plane too, but. We'll have to keep an eye out. There's a lot of ways we could trigger an alarm of some kind. And if that happens, uh, I guess that's where we move fast and uh, hopefully don't have to shoot people. You plan on not shooting a lot of people tonight? I hope to shoot as few people as possible. None would be perfect, but the real answer we all know is as many as we need to. Wherever we are, Leroy is just face palming after you tried to say that like some kind of badass. <laughs> His face did get all somber when he said it. <laughs> I I could see it. <laughs> well, not sure how I feel about it, but something that resembles plan. Yeah, I'm not exactly one good at sneaking, but uh, I'm going to give it a go. I think everything goes according to this plan. You'll be able to hide in plain sight. Hopefully. Yeah. Get ourselves a couple of toolboxes to hide our gear in. Get uh, Hopefully you'll be able to take care of making sure we don't show up on the uh, the big screen. And uh, Elric at some point is going to send a throwback a text. It says, 
Hey, uh, while we're in there, try to keep an eye out for anything else that might be of particular interest or value so we can uh, score some extra new on this run. Fire your back response. You want to steal a stapler or something? Uh, you, you get no response from that. <laughs> uh, yeah, then like a minute later, like, wait a minute, are you getting paid for this? <laughs> They're like, um, there's no response, though. You picture Elric in his house where he's sending the text from like stomping up and down on the ground and tossing his comm link across the room. <laughs> Why do you all people all hate Nuyen? All right, he's, he's done with his tantrum. All right, so are you guys staking out the building at night, and at what time do you guys want to to attempt your your ingress? One o five. I was thinking like one o seven at least. Uh, well, as soon as it's dusk, I want to conjure a Force Six uh, Spirit of Man with the optional powers of innate spell flamethrower and innate spell magic fingers. I mean, it's basically a fire elemental then too, right? And not as good on the combat front. Base damage for a fire elemental's flame blast is a lot higher than a 4-6 uh, flamethrower spell. Yeah, I got five hits. Well, you got three net, so four drain. Yeah, it takes some drain, so that's why I did it at dusk instead of waiting until we were going to go in. Yeah, But he'll be around until the morning. Yeah, he's been basically spending most of the uh, late afternoon and evening uh, feverishly cooking up concoctions and taking uh, an hour or two naps in between. <laughs> All right. So, what's your guys' plan of approach? Where are you? Where are you parked? Where are you? How are you heading in? Oh, I needed. Uh, I needed one more question answered before sure. that. Uh, what is the actual like rating of this host? Like, what, what am I going up against? So, when I do start rolling dice, I know the host was rated seven. All right. All right. Yeah, Throwback will definitely insist that the sooner I can get a direct connection, the better. So if there were any doubts about it, I am definitely coming with. So you guys pulling into the parking lot or are you parking across the street, parking at the barbecue joint? Barbecue joint sounds good. Oh, wasn't there? Um, didn't I call up the Marauders or something to have them keep an eye on the uh, the highways or something like that? Yeah, the last time you had talked to the Marauders... Um, you or you talk to Marauder, um, that's the guy's name. He, yeah, uh, right. he, you were asking him about good ways in and out across the across the wall, and he gave you some pointers basically. Okay, I just remember talking to him, and something was relevant there. Not that's in, not that I remember, um, but I could be misremembering. But I guess it doesn't matter since none of us really remember anyway. I guess that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> so it's like it never happened. I mean, I'm pretty sure they said they got us and they're just going to run, you know, super interference on the highway if we need it. <laughs> so again, how are you guys approaching? Um, well, we have a van, right? That looks like a... Or did we get a... You can get a security van. Look at that. You talking about my, my new car? Got a van. All right. So we're going to have... Because we're going to have to roll up on this place. Like, we're actually supposed to be rolling up on this place? Uh, I think we need to sneak in, don't we? Well, we're going to pretend to be legitimate employees, are we not? Oh, um, I didn't realize that was about the plan. Uh, did we have uniforms? Oh, see, oh, actually, the spirit concealment power, the way that works, though, if you, like, step out and somebody notices you, it drops the concealment all at once on everyone, including on our astral. All so right, it's so we'll probably not that. best to be observed by anybody. So we'll have that as just a backup then. All right, we'll just park a little bit of ways then and uh, see what shakes loose. Yeah, make sure Payday's in position to come get us in a hurry if we need transport. Yep, he, uh, he, he tells you that he'll... He'll be parked down the road. He sounds all grumpy about it. Guys, yeah, just a bucket of roses. <laughs> all right, and Elric hands out a whole bunch of party favors. All right. Should we save those till after to celebrate? <laughs> uh, most of them are little, like small, like little one ounce vials of some sort of colored fluid. Are they and they're all different colors. So that you could take them on an airplane? That's very uh, considerate. They probably wouldn't let me take these on an airplane. It points out uh, which ones are, uh, basically, each of you has uh, an armor potion and a combat sense potion. It lasts for probably as long as we're in the building, so it's a good idea to drink it before you go in. And then hang out to these things, and he passes out a few other things. Um, I have to intentionally trigger those, so don't worry about them. I'll keep track of when those go off. And he's going to have Pillar hold, uh, hold one of the healing potions that he has to be there to trigger as well. And he'll hang on to the other one there, so... I've got a whole bunch of alchemical preparations that we'll be using right before we go in. Is it this crazy long list in your Elric's current alchemical preparations doc? Yes. All right, I see him. Oh, 
just need to whip up one more. I think it's slightly worried when he says crazy long list. <laughs> Not as worried as Leroy gets every time Elric hands him one of these things. Yeah, yeah. Something about adding chemicals to, to booze is uh it's just not right. Alright. Um do you you're gonna trigger that uh oh well you don't trigger so you guys are concealed by the spirit. Yep. You guys it's four are... six spirit of man, so it's minus six to people's perception tests to notice us. Absolutely. You guys are headed in. And um are there any uh, anything being activated yet? Uh, in terms of uh, powers or preparations or anything? Right before we actually move on the building, I'm going to type out and send everyone a text to uh, drink your potions. Does anybody not drink their potion? I will drink my potion. How many dice do I have to roll for this thing? All right. Uh, Pillar, you're going to roll eight dice. Leroy, you're going to roll eight dice. Throwback, you're going to roll ten. Throwback waits to, you know, a second to see how the other two react, but the hill down has. Uh, limit on this is force four, and this is the armor spell. Well, I got a one. <laughs> I got owned. I got two on mine. Those four hits on throwback. Well, he's the important one. The VIP. All right, so I get the most potent combat sense one to pillar. So you're going to roll 11 dice. The second most one to Leroy, you're going to roll eight dice. I'm sorry, how many? Eight dice. Uh, six dice for throwback, and seven for myself. I like that. Limit three. Down. Limit is only three on this. Ah, oh, son of a... I got seven hits. Three's good. I'll take three. It's three extra dice, two surprise tests, and uh, defense tests. Those are your potions. Now I'm going to trigger off some other stuff. Uh, Pillar, do you have a full essence? Uh, no, I have 5.66. Okay, so roll 11 dice. Limit of four. This is an, an agility buff. I like this one. Assuming your agility is not higher than four. Nope, and I keep all four of those. No, all I right, I'm gonna... My agility is five, buddy. <laughs> oh, that does not work then. Oops. Elric's putting one on himself, and he goes from being totally clumsy to above average. Okay, Elric's going to trigger an increased strength spell on himself. Hey, I'm a lot less wimpy. I look the same, though. It doesn't give me any height. Uh, pillar, roll ten dice. This is limited to five, and it's increased intuition. They, they make shoes to help with that problem. Another four, I'm good. Do one of those on me. Bad. Was there a limit to the armor? Or was that just as many hits as we got? Uh, four, because it was force four. Okay. Hey, buddy, was there a ward around this place? No. Thank God. Not that I saw. And then I'm going to tr trigger my increased reflexes on myself. Nice, I got four hits. Okay, the, most of the stuff is going to last uh, at least several minutes. So if it takes longer to, than that due to the run, we're in big trouble. All right, so you guys are sneaking up, so you might want to roll some stealth rolls. Yeah, I have four dice instead of one. It's more than I got. Better living through alchemy. So I get two hits on my sneaking roll. Let's not talk about it. Throwback got two hits as well. I want to try to coordinate with uh, Payback and his surveillance drones to know, um, you know, where, where and when would be the best time to move and stuff. I assume we got all our edge back, right? We had days to do this. Yeah, you all have edge. And, uh, of course, I'm pretty sure... Did, did we spot any um, flying drones that had weapons on them? Or am I thinking of something else? No, you did not spot any flying drones with weapons. Okay, good. So the only person I didn't hear was Pillar. How many hits did you get? Well, I re-rolled the zero hits I got and got one. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So, you guys are headed up. Um, and you're making your way... Under oh. concealment. I should note that Elric is wearing a helmet. It does have a, a respirator and stuff, so... But most importantly, it uh, conceals his identity somewhat. Well, you're going through, and you're sneaking up. You're under concealment from that spirit. And um, did you were you observing in the astral, or were you avoiding that? Uh, no, I don't want to be astrally perceiving. Uh, though I would okay. like my spirit to inform me of any, if, if anything, you know... Threatening happens in the astral. Right. Okay. So you guys, like I said, you make your way up. Um, guards don't seem to notice you, but uh, you do see that um, there's a dog that's patrolling. It crosses over kind of the path that you guys have made, and it seems to catch um, a scent and start making its way in your direction as you're getting close to the door. So our concealment fell off the dog detectives? 
Is that what happens? Is if you're detected, concealment falls uh, off completely? Yep. If it like spots us, yes. I'm not so sure about picking up our scent though. Double well, check, but I'm pretty sure as soon as you're detected, it, you know it falls or failed. The uh, the concealment is a straight perception uh, penalty, not like a specific type of perception penalty. Yeah, good point. So if it managed to get us through negative six on its sniff test, then uh, I think it's just got us. All right. Well, then that's what happens. You guys have been spotted at the front door. Uh, need a distraction. Shoot the fucking dog. That's yeah. a distraction. The dog looks right up at you and uh, starts to like snarl. And, I'm gonna um, act. Okay. I would like to make friends with the dog. I have brought jerky. I think we're going to have to do initiative because um, if anything, the dog nobody's going to be surprising anybody else. But uh, you so definitely wouldn't be property. surprising the dog. So. Here, I was trying to do my math for my drug addiction next time. I think it was, you know, Pillar accidentally, like, farted or something on the way up. Probably. I was trying to do yeah, math in my head. I had to my, stop at that barbecue How many times place? can I it, take cram before I'm in trouble? It's the, the <laughs> fact that orcs just smell worse. Wait, does cram give you the farts? Is that one of the side effects? <laughs> no, that's not. Fuck. All right, uh, where are we keep, keeping track of initiative? I have it up on my uh, scroll 20 table. Uh, Elric goes on 27. Did you spend edge again? Uh, no, no, I have the improved reflexes preparation on it. Oh, now. that's right. Plus an improved logic spell, uh, which affects it. So I'm like 15 plus 46 right now. You alchemists. <laughs> and I, I realized that I forgot to trigger my increased reaction spell on myself. But, so I could go even faster once I do that. <laughs> so Elric, uh, being being hyped up on magic juice... <laughs> Um, gets to go first. He's like super aware. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hold my action because I'm hoping somebody has a less bright way to quietly take this dog out. Maybe less fatal, I hope. Alright, next up is a pillar on 19. I'm gonna shoot it. <laughs> what kind of weapon are you drawing and fire, firing? Taser. I'm a criminal. I'm not allowed to carry anything else. Awesome. Okay. I just didn't want it to be a big lob gun. Hey, is it wanna, farther than five the years away? I was just thinking the same thing. Law-abiding pillar. <laughs> Doesn't want to violate her parole or anything. <laughs> you know how much paperwork's involved in that? Uh, is it more than five meters away? Um, yeah. How much is it? I just need to know for my minuses. Uh, it's probably about 12, 10 to 15, 12 meters away, let's say. Only negative two, I can deal with that. Uh, so I'll take aim and shoot at it with a single shot. I got five hits. Was a surprise. All right. Defending? You hit it. You got a... Uh, 10S minus 5. Yeah, what's the... You said 10S minus 5? Yeah. All right. Yeah, you um, you nailed the dog with, uh, with a, a round from that taser, and it goes down. I will go right. collect my dart. It's just there's not evidence laying around that we should... Actually, we should get moving. I'm going to take my held action, and I'm going to cast Levitate on the unconscious dog. All right, go for it. No animals were harmed in filming this podcast. Well, I checked to see if any of the guards noticed that happen. Uh, going with the Force 5, so I get 5 hits. And I'm going to basically levitate the dog over. Um, are there any uh, convenient bushes to stash the beast in? Yeah, there's bushes all over the place, um, especially close to and around the building. All right, I will stash it in the nearest convenient bush. All right. Um, now, the the noise of the dog does seem to have... Uh, uh, roused the suspicion of a nearby gu of a guard um, doing one of his patrols. So he's headed in your direction. The where you are, right at the front door, is not particularly dark either. So, uh, is this? Um, are we still in initiative? Yes. So okay. next would be Leroy. you you have a held action, but I guess you levitated. So Elric, Elric had a held action. And That's what I meant. Elric yep. had a held action. He levitated. So now it's Leroy's. Leroy's up. Uh, I will take a simple to ready my silenced pistol and uh, send a quick message of we scrubbing or going. And then go. Who's got the uh, maglock pass key? I think that would be Leroy. Uh, I guess. I mean, uh, though we might want our decker to do the actual using of it because I think that um, might help to have someone with technical skills do it. Are we in a position where we could conceivably all get inside the door before this uh, this one inept guard finds ours? Yes, so um, he's 
he's a he's a decent distance away. He's gonna have to make his way to you in order to investigate. Like he just heard a noise, so he's coming to investigate. Okay. Um. Can I pick up a rock and throw the rock somewhere else while walking towards the door with a "Come on, let's go." <laughs> Attempt to trivia game logic this guy. Um. Sure. There's a there's like flower bed bush areas, you know, off to the side of the sidewalk that are filled with, you know, decorative rocks. Yep. Uh, I'm just gonna throw some. Sure, I'll give it to you. You can throw a rock. Ha -ha. Oh, there you go. You threw a rock reasonably around where you wanted it to go. Yeah, it doesn't have to be accurate. just has to be away from us. All right, um, throw back. You're up. Okay, it sounds like I'm going to swipe the card out of Leroy's pocket. And, oh, we would uh, have totally just... Who, like, who's going to handle the door? The tech guy thing? All right, here you go, tech guy. Yeah, we'll, we'll say you have it. <laughs> All right. It makes the most sense for you to have it. Then I am uh, going to be in position to uh, to go ahead and swipe it and uh, and get the door open. All right. Well, you uh, you have a rating six maglock passkey, I believe. What? No, it would have been rating. Yeah, it was rating six. Yeah, rating six. Six so hits I on a key card copier. Yep. Yeah, so I think that is a uh, rating times two versus the the lock. So I think you roll r twelve dice on that. Yeah. Was there anything where if you have a hardware skill? Uh, no, that's for doing the actual copying, isn't it? Yeah, I probably could have helped copy it, but I think swiping the key card is literally just running the key card through the reader. Okay, well. You've just put the pressure on my dice pool instead of yours. Yep. Well, you're a human. You have edge. It's fine. Five successes. Also, if I were using it, my gremlins too would come into play. Oh, good point. <laughs> All right. The, the light on the uh, card reader switches from red to green, and you hear a click. Throwback exhales as he opens his eyes and sees the color change. I'll grab the grab the handle and twist and pull. All right. Um, the guard is still making his way over, and Elric and Pillar. Elric, you're up. All right. I'm going to use a simple action to trigger the increased reaction of myself that I forgot to before, and I'm also going to use a simple action to command my spirit to conceal all of us, including itself, once more. Okay. Using up the second services you guys are concealed again i will say that that kind of breaks the the uh the the sequence of combat um and you guys can move again you um we can move fluidly here i'm assuming you guys would just move quickly through the door correct that's what i'm planning on doing I'll reload my taser Ria. since we're all concealed again why don't we get another stealth test <laughs> no 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 done with this <laughs> and hopefully Pillar's cologne doesn't throw, off, throw us off this time. I know I'm more agile. I'm not saying I wasn't grateful for your buffs, but you could have made this a little easier. It's not cologne. It's that natural work. Fix that in post, please. What? You were you were saying natural orc monk, right? Yeah. No, it's an orc monk. It's fine. We're, we've suddenly started playing D&D. &D. <laughs> uh, who who uh, got the lowest? Who got the lowest number of hits? I got two. I pre-edged and managed to get seven hits. What? Yeah, seven dice, and I started with three sixes, and they just kept exploding. All right. Well, you guys uh, feeling a little bit stealthier. Uh, seems like Pillar has at least momentarily gotten through her gas issue. And uh, That's enough to kill a dog. <laughs> Not get unconscious. You guys are in the building now. The door shuts behind you. And uh, if you bother to look behind you through the glass, the the guard comes up after he was confused a little bit by a rock behind him. It, it delayed him a little bit and bought you guys some time. He we comes up to the door. long enough to find out what he does. All right. Well, then never mind. You guys are in the At building. At least will get shovey if we do. <laughs> now, when you guys come through the front door, there is a security desk right there. And there was a guard at it who looks up and he's going to get up and investigate. But you guys are stealthy. He he kind of walks past and over to the door, and and um, he looks a little confused, like like maybe he was just seeing something, and looks around and checks the door, moves it a little bit, and shrugs and makes his way back to the desk. Calls over on the on the comm link. Anybody uh anybody see anything or hear anything strange? I I thought I heard the door, um, but I don't see anybody here. And you hear back um somebody saying something. Uh yeah, there was some. Some strange noise out outside, and then he says, um, "Can I get another 
Can I get some more eyes down here at the front with me, please? I don't think I'm likely to want to stick around to pay too, uh, to, to let them carry on too much of their conversation while we're not going about, about our business. Well, the way down should be this way. Let's go. We're moving. All right. It's a nice lobby. It's a dim, um, you know, of course, being at night, but uh, the hallways are lit decently um, pretty well. It's as you as you would walk down the hallway looking into sort of like work areas where cubicles and stuff would be. Those are all dark. The hallways are lit, though. Um, but uh, are you guys going to be trying to take an elevator way down, or are you going to take some stairs? Elevators are death traps. <laughs> <laughs> there is a stairwell um, pretty near this main lobby area, uh, but you remember from the blueprints, there's also another stairwell if you were to go like uh, like uh, 30 or so meters down the hall. Pillar will tell uh, Leroy, will meet you down there. And she's going to look at Thurback and then we get you in that elevator, you can find a direct connection. Thurback will just nod, yes. Let's do that. The elevator, again, is near the lobby. There are more elevators also down the hall if you, um, if you need to go down the hall. Albert is tapping out. Go ahead, sorry. Albert's tapping out on his comlink uh, uh, text. It just says, uh, stairs or elevator, let's use the ones down the hall. Yeah, that's my thought. Look, find the one that's not in the right in the middle of the lobby. Yeah. As we're moving, I take the time to type out. I wish there was a faster way for me to do this than typing. What roads is for, man? I'm going sh- to show you some roads when we're out of here. It's going to change Drill your world. hole in your head for you. Yeah, I, I tap out. I can't get roads. Cyberware messes with my magic. They're not roads, man. Here, actually, for some odd reason, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> God, I had a Tata Jack. Hiller's going to hand him a set of roads. I got a look at it strangely and tuck it in my pocket. <laughs> not it's sure not what to do with this. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't drill a hole in your head. Oh my God. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. This show would not be possible without the generous support of our patrons over at Patreon. If you like the show and you want to help support it, head over to patreon.com slash complex action. Supporting can get you access to GM notes and even the ability to vote on the direction that the story will take occasionally. Now that's patreon.com slash complex action to help out. There were NPCs and organizations which were provided by patrons of Complex Action, and those were Marauder, submitted by David Frederick. Thank you very much. The character art seen on our YouTube page and various social media places was done by Ethan Brewerton. Check out his awesome Shadowrun artwork at esbrewerton.tumblr.com. The background music in this episode is brought to you by Prism Shard. To hear more of his Shadowrun-inspired music, head on over to soundcloud.com slash prism-shard and uh, give him some love. The Topps Company, Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logo, artwork, marks, photographs, sounds, audio, video, and or any proprietary material used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Topps Company, Inc. has granted permission to Complex Action to use such names, logos, artwork, marks, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its websites, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with Complex Action in any official capacity whatsoever.